Right, okay, so let's talk about... Uh, let's talk about another uh, story that was kind of on my mind, and I alluded to it. So, uh, I don't often get to talk about sports on this. Um, but I, I saw something that, that happened um, over, the, over the weekend. And uh, it was about Raheem Sterling. Now, I think uh, I'll give you my views on Raheem Sterling. Uh, I think Raheem Sterling is like one of England's best players, hands down. I think he's a really, you know, good talent, good prospect. Never seen him involved in anything like legitimately stupid. Um, and yet he seems to be very fucking maligned by, by the press. And then I saw this news story sort of breaking, uh, which was apparently a fan who had racially abused Raheem Sterling when he went over to um, take a corner kick. Um, and I've got the video of that here, and I'm going to show it to you. Um, but just before I do, I was, like, watching this kind of unfold in real time, and I thought, God, that's awful, you know, like, fucking... Um, you don't really see things like that outside of, uh, you know, Russia sort of these days, uh, where, you know, uh, Russia and Turkey, where black players have, have talked about still getting bananas thrown at them, which was, like... Yeah, I remember happening. I remember that happening. You know, fucking even you know players like John Barnes and um, Viv Anderson. Uh, you know, back when I was a kid, I remember stories about that. I mean, you know, what's crazy is everybody was fucking universally disgusted uh, back then. So the idea it would sort of still be going on, you know, like any form of racial abuse for footballers was like, you know, holy moly. But um, you know, I, I've also, I, you know, when you consider, uh, you know, John Terry. You know, captain of of, of Chelsea, um, racially abused Anton Ferdinand, and then you know while he was like England captain, uh, you know there's some crazy shit out there. You know what I mean? So anyway, I was watching it happen in real time, and I thought, well, they, they must have got this on audio because it was being reported that this guy had called him, you know, a black cunt. And, um, and, 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 and I saw, like, Ian Wright, uh, legendary uh, Arsenal striker, tweeting about it. So Stan Collymore, who, you know, I've interacted with Stan before, back when I used to be a sports writer at Sabotage Times. Me and Stan, um, I think, had a very brief exchange about... Um, he'd said that one of the problems you've got in sports journalism is there's not a lot of working class guys in it and it doesn't reflect the reality of the scene and i wrote a follow-up article about that over at sabotage times and you know he was a real cool guy and i don't agree with everything he says and i think he's very quick to to perceive racism where there isn't any but equally i respect his opinion as a guy who has gone through as at one point the most expensive english transfer uh, when he moved from nottingham forest to liverpool a guy who's been in the limelight done all the stupid stuff you know got caught dogging in canic canic uh, chase or whatever over in birmingham had the domestic abuse with ulrika johnson was obviously quite rightly reviled uh for that and still has to listen to that you know to this day and uh you know dealt with depression and alcoholism and everything else so um you know stan collingwell has been through the ringer he knows what it's like to be a black footballer in the public eye but anyway it was all being tweeted as a matter of fact that this guy had racially abused Raheem Sterling. And I was like, um, okay, so let's listen to the, you know, where's the audio? Because they said they captured it on video. But there is no audio. Um, on Twitter, I swear, this video, it had like 40,000, 50,000, like fucking retweets. Everyone saying this guy was a racist. Everyone doxing this guy. But... It just turns out everyone on Twitter is an expert lip reader. Because, check it out, right? I'm going to, I'll play you the video. So, this is the original tweet uh, where somebody said, uh, Chelsea fans calling Raheem Sterling a fucking black cunt, right? Well, let's just, again, let's just watch the video. Now, when I, when I put it in your head, if I present this and say, oh, he's saying this thing, then obviously it looks more like it, right? But, like, could you be, like, could you put a man's life on this? Like, that, that's what he says. Like, are you 100% confident that is what he is saying? Because 
Because I watch this, and sometimes it looks like it. So, I was like watching it, and I was going... I was trying to think of things he could have said. Um... In, you know, like, what else could it be? And, of course, Raheem Sterling does play for Manchester, and therefore a, a, a common uh, term for to describe people from Manchester is mank. Mank, right? So now, think about him saying, you fucking mank cunt. Just think about that. And again, just watch the gammon fucking... I know, right? it's embarrassing Like he's acting like this. He's 60 years old, by the way, and he's behaving like this. Yeah? And now, you know, now you think, oh, well, fuck, yeah, it could be Mank, right? Well, anyway, this was reported just... It just went through the fucking internet like a fucking bushfire. And that this guy had racially abused him. This guy was identified in, like, a, an hour. Um, oh, hello. I feel like ever since Raheem went to City, he's had this huge target on his back from the yeah. English press. Yeah, I agree. I yeah. believe he might have a point when it comes to his Instagram post that black English players get demonized by the press. Yeah, and that, that, that's what I'm going to get to. Um, because it was interesting. So, I mean, first of all, um, what happened to this guy, Colin Wing, he's called. He got banned from uh, the Chelsea ground, which there's an argument to say you just shouldn't be shouting abuse at players like that when they go to get the ball but i mean it it happens in every league all, all over the world that you try and intimidate the players and you know that's why you have a home advantage and stuff um but he also lost his job he got fired he got fired for being a racist from his from his job and um there, there, there was an, there's an investigation that's been conducted. Every person who was sat with him said they didn't hear him say anything racist. Um, uh, you know, he denies it, right? Which, you know, obviously you would, but the fact that he denies it with a plausible excuse, you know, like I would be inclined to give him the benefit of the doubt. I mean, you know, this is being investigated by the Metropolitan Police, which is standard for any uh, allegation of racism as, at a football ground. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it, 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 it's very strange that nobody else heard anything. And Raheem Sterling, he put out an Instagram post, which you can see here, which didn't even say he had been racially abused by the guy. And you see as well, I mean, first of all, he's kind of laughing. I mean, great on him. Like, if, 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 I mean, personally... I've seen a lot of footballers around the world that when they've had racial abuse, they go to the ref. Games have been halted. You know, I remember the great, uh, you know, um, Kalina, uh, you know, fucking doing that and, and, you know, a few others. And, and rightly so. It's, it, it's a disgrace. It's got no place at a football ground. But he doesn't react as if he heard anything racist. And then in his Instagram post, he said, um, good morning. I just he will uh, well basically the thrust of this is he says the problem is with the media and this is where it gets interesting for me because I wholeheartedly agree with him and I think the the way he's been reported about in the media is a disgrace and I don't know if it's I don't know if it's a racist thing but certainly there's evidence to suggest young black footballers definitely get uh a, 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 they're more quick to like they, the british press write negative stories about every footballer they're always looking to get you you know oh look he's smoking a cigarette outside of a nightclub you know like why is this why is this on the back page you know who gives a fuck you know like uh, uh, you know it, it, oh oh player scene you know single man seen with like two girls at once like i don't care you know I, I, this is like they they're young millionaires um you know, and, and they live in a fucking bubble. They got to take the fucking enjoyment where they can. But anyway, 
Um, he says, good morning. I just want to say I'm not normally the person to talk a lot, but when I think I need my point to be heard, I will speak up. Regarding what was said at the Chelsea game, as you can see by my reaction, I just had a laugh because I don't expect no better. For example, you have two young players starting out their careers, both play for the same team, both have done the right thing, which is buy a new house for their mothers, who are putting a lot of time and love into helping them get where they are. But look how the newspapers get their message across for the young black player and then for the young white player. I think this is an unacceptable... Uh, I think this is unacceptable, both innocent and have uh, not done a thing wrong, but just by the way it has been worded. The young black kid has looked at in a bad light, which helps fuel racism uh, and uh, and aggressive behavior. So for all the newspapers that don't understand why people are racist in this day and age, all I have to say is have a second thought about fair publicity and give all players an equal chance, right? Which is like, you know, again, you want to, you can link this back to the Sonic Fox thing in a way. You want to, you want to make a point? Don't make it about yourself. If it's bigger than you, make it about, make it about that big thing. And you know he's handled this incredibly well. Now I always, I've always liked Raheem Stone. I think he's a fucking great football. I think he's a great kid. I think he's gone through a lot. Like we'll talk about in a second. But his his father was killed in Kingston, uh, Jamaica, um, and and he's now said he's now said, hey media. Here it is, guys. They fucking have at it, right? Like, there's a racism problem that you're inadvertently fueling with negative coverage. Now, what he's what he referred to there in his Instagram post, I think I bookmarked it. Um, let me just see if I can find the actual images for you, because I I was genuinely shocked. Actually, I thought this was uh, yeah, way to way like he, he had evidence to prove his point, uh, very much so. So let me just see if I can find it. Where was it? Sorry, I've been bookmarking a lot of stuff for Avenatti and Stormy Daniels at the moment. So I gotta see if I'm um, gonna see how far down it is. Ghost Pirate. Here it is. Yeah, I got it. Um so here it is, right? Um real journalism. So uh thanks for the sub there. Uh Super God Knob. Appreciate it. Um, so look, here it is. Uh, the, these are the two pics that he posted on his Instagram. And this is what he was talking about. So young Manchester City footballer, 20, on 25,000 a week, splashes out on a man on, on mansion on market for 2.25 million, despite having never started a Premier League match. And then this was the other one. Manchester City starlet, Phil Foden, buys new 2 million home for his mum. Now those are the same story. But they, they are very different in tone. And obviously, it's at the daily fail. So, I mean, um, you know, that's something to consider. But, so, it, right, so here we go, right? Young Manchester City footballer, 20. Manchester City starlet, Phil Foden. So, immediately, when you talk about y youth, um, you know, there's, there's, there's a loaded code there. You're talking about naivety. You're talking about young, stupid, reckless, you know? It, it, it's loaded language. So he's a young Manchester City footballer on 25000 a week. So why mention his salary? Why do you mention his salary but not his salary? Why do you mention his salary? Because the working man fucking hates it. The working man fucking hates it. It stirs you up, doesn't it? How many times have you listened to a boring fat cunt in a pub go, yeah, all these bloody fucking footballers is fucking disgrace, isn't it? Look at the money they make. Oh, my, 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 my old mother, she's a fucking teacher, right? She's got to fucking deal with all these kids, deal with all these fucking animals, right? And she makes fucking, she makes that a year. She makes that a fucking year, doesn't she? She, she makes that in a fucking year, and you're going to give this fucking football, you're going to give him 25 fucking, fucking well, what's happening in the fucking world? What's happening in the fucking world? And it's like, listen, mate, I don't know how I'll break it to you, but it, overall, people in entertainment make disproportionate amount of money compared to people who work in, like, the public sector and provide essential services. It's been like that since time immemorial. I don't know what else to tell you. Since we came up with the idea of money, it's fucking been like that. So... So, but but they deliberately stoke that. You'll notice you don't know how much Phil Foden makes. Because they don't want you to know. Right? Then, splashes out. What does that say? Splashing out. Splashing out means you don't need to do it. Splashing out means it's impulsive. Right? And then, a, a, a mansion on the market for 2.25 million. So again... Why do we need to know how much the house costs? He can obviously afford it. Who gives a fuck? D 
despite having never started a Premier League match, as if in any way that means, you know, he's obviously done something in his professional career to be on 25 grand a week at Man City. I mean, maybe by virtue of being British, because obviously they've got all these financial fair play rules and homegrown talent rules in football and stuff now. But, you know, like, who cares if he hasn't started? Manchester City is one of the best teams in the fucking world. You know, he, he's a young player. He's learning his craft. He's learning his trade. I'd be surprised if he was starting Premier League games for Manchester City. He'd have to be a hell of a player. And honestly, £25,000 comparatively, I bet if we looked at the average squad salary in Manchester City, I bet it's probably double that. In fact, let's see if I can get that data for you. Let me just see. Yeah, I don't know if I can get that, actually. I know you can get the... Uh, you can definitely get salary information now. They, I think they have to make it financially. I think they have to make it available. But anyway, I guarantee you, 25 grand is fucking small potatoes if you fucking play at Manchester City. I just know enough about how it works, right? So, so again, you don't mention who he's bought the house for. You make it sound like it's for himself. It was for his mother. Phil Foden, on the other hand, gets that benefit. He's got two million. So, two million home. Right? Not a mansion. It's not a mansion. It's a home. I mean, a mansion makes it, again, it makes it sound egregious, doesn't it? Like, decadent, luxurious. Have you seen house prices in Britain, by the way? 2.25 mil. What's that? Four bedroom these days, mate. It's insane. A two up, two down will cost you three quarters of a mil. Right? So, they use the word mansion. Because obviously, oh, because it must be a mansion. What's a mansion? What's the qualifier for a mansion? But when Phil Foden does it, it's, it's for a home. It's a home, right? And ooh, think about what, oh, home, home for his mother, for his old, and look, and he, they don't even say mother. They don't even say mother. They say mum. They say mum. And you know why they do that? Because again, it's a, it's a very, uh, it's a very associative word. It's a very associative word. Mum is what we all in Britain affectionately call our mothers. Mother makes it sound a bit cold, a bit clinical, right? Mum is, oh, hey, come here, mum. Love you, mum. You know what I mean? This, this is, is, every, like, I could do an entire seminar on these two headlines alone basically explaining about you know the 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 elements of linguistic control that are evident in everyday mainstream media every day this is how they manipulate you and and they're only getting more and more sophisticated in how they do it but these two stories are undoubtedly designed to present uh to uh, and provoke two different kinds of reaction and it's very clear now the question becomes is there a racial component to this? Because why do it for the black kid and not for the white kid? You know? Why is that? And Raheem Sterling, as I said, who's been around the block quite a while, one of the most reviled players for reasons I'll never understand in terms of media coverage, which I'm going to show you now. Um, you know, he says yes. You know, I might want to listen to this guy. Because that does that that is slimy as fuck. There's no, there's no getting away that this is the same publication, uh, the same year, publishing the exact same story. In fact, the only difference is one player is black, one player is white. So you got some explaining to do. You know? I, I'm not saying it is racist, but I'm saying you can make a fucking strong argument it is. So, let's talk about Raheem Sterling and the shit he's had to put up with uh, from the, the press. Um, right? I don't know if you remember, um, there, was a, there was a moment where uh, Raheem actually said he was too tired uh, to, to turn out for a, a friendly uh, for England. Now, one of the things that you'll notice with this is... There's a, right, there's a lot of politics at play between international and club football. Lots of politics at play. Alex Ferguson was the god of this. Ryan Giggs should have had a million caps for Wales. He was the best fucking Welsh player from fucking 15 years old to fucking... And he played till he was 37 and he could have still got a fucking game. 
you know? But he, he missed out on a ton of Welsh games because Ferguson was like, listen, it's fucking Wales. You ain't qualifying. So, and I need you fit for United. So, Ryan Giggs would always get knocks. He'd always get fucking injuries when we had friendlies, especially friendlies. Even qualifiers sometimes if Man United have a big game. Yeah, friendly, by the way, is literally a meaningless game that the manager uses to basically get a better idea about his international squad because an international squad is obviously picked you pick like 22 players whatever the 26 players um from across you know your country your nation and then you have to try people out and see who can play with each other of course you've got the added problem you get judged on friendly results if you're an international manager because obviously tournaments are only like every two fucking years or whatever the big ones and then it's like qualify a tournament qualify a tournament you know, so it's like your European Championships, you know, qualifiers, and then the European Championship, then the qualifiers for the World Cup, and then the World Cup. So, you, you, you know, you get judged on your win rate at friendly, so they never experiment too wildly, right? They still pick a pretty good core of a team and try out like two or three players. You know, that's the, so and a lot of managers are like, well, if my player goes and plays for England in a meaningless game and he breaks his leg, um, you know, we don't win the league because of it. You've just cost us 60 mil. And you don't get that money back and you're not insured. And the FA, who controls both the England side is, and, and the Premier League, you know, they have to kind of like mediate and do all this stuff. So there's a lot there's a lot at stake, right? Now, Raheem Sterling famously came out and said, I was tired, right? Uh, and too tired for a fucking friendly game, right? Now, that that doesn't mean, like, literally, like, I have fucking narcolepsy yet. I mean, and again... Sometimes you've got to take a little bit of responsibility and understand what the press are and that they're jackals and fucking hyenas who are just waiting for you to fuck up. And if you give them the ammunition, they will hit you with both fucking barrels, you know? But this was the headline here. Tired Raheem at 3 a.m. Three Lions party. This was that he went to a party with some fellow, uh, you know, Eng England footballers. During this time, he'd said he was too, like, tired to turn out in a friendly, meaning he was physically exhausted. He had knocks. He didn't feel 100% right. So they, they completely bombarded him, saying, how dare he be out at 3 a.m.? How dare he? How dare, like, a fucking 20-year-old, you know, football star be out past 3 a.m. when he says he's too tired to play? Like, you know, think about the fixture congestion we got in the Premier League. He, these motherfuckers play like 62 games a year and shit now and that's that's before you get to internationals that's your that's your club level football your european football your cup football right so they did that then um right uh there was this one also in the sun right you're gonna see a lot of sun headlines by the way we all know why because the sun is a fucking absolute garbage rag that should never shouldn't shouldn't be in print anyway from troubled youth to $100,000 a week. The life of footy idiot Raheem Sterling. Why is he an idiot? Why is he an idiot? Sounds pretty fucking smart to me. Turned his fucking life around from being a troubled youth. And now he's making bank and got a good life for himself. Why is he a footy idiot? Can you explain that to me? Why is he a football idiot? You know, he's made some mistakes. You know, he's, he's, you know, he's, he's, he's gone through a development. But footy idiot right then um okay this was um this is back in the brendan rogers era so um this was when clearly liverpool had an unearthed and absolute fucking gem in the form of raheem sterling and obviously you know, guess what happens when you're hot shit? You're a footballer. You, you want to get more salary. You want to get better contracts. That's the game. That's the game. Well, this was... Uh, is this the Sun or the Mirror? Uh, it might have been this. No, I think it's the Sun again. Um, they just said he's greedy, right? Because he wanted double what the salary was... I mean, you know, was, was going to be aimed at him. Now, look, again, footballers get called greedy all the time. But this is this was in a season where Raheem Sterling was like hands down one of the best things about Brendan Rodgers Liverpool. Obviously, I think he was there with Suarez as well uh, at, that, at that particular time. So you know, Suarez, a man who was serially fucking bit players like on three separate occasions, and was also blue balling Liverpool while he was waiting to get himself off to fucking Barcelona. I can't remember the greedy headline. 
young breakout star of the fucking year, Raheem Stone, at Liverpool wants 50 grand. That's pretty much in line with the average, like, Premier League fucking salary or a little bit over it. Greedy. Greedy cunt. Right? Um, then, here we go. This was a classic. Uh, right? So, Raheem Sterling uh, decided uh, to show that he bought his mum um, some nice, uh, like, you know, stuff for her house. What he bought her was, he, he, like, bedecked out her bathroom. He'd got her a whole new bathroom, you know? Right now, again, really mundane. How could anyone be outraged about this? England failure right so this is sterling sinks to new low this is over an instagram post of him showing that he bought his mother some nice stuff for her house okay and because england hadn't done particularly well and you know sterling had had some you know been in and out of the team england failure steps off plane and insults fans by showing off blinging house obscene raheem what what is that what, like, what is that? What are you angry about? Which fan would get angry about a millionaire football player buying a sink for his mum? Who would be upset by this? Right? Front page! New low! Like, are, are we for fucking real? Uh, this was the uh, da Daily Mail. Um, this this is again just bizarre, right? Like uh, just a strange one to be upset about. Um, Manchester City star Raheem Sterling owns two hundred thousand pounds a week, okay, but takes an eighty pound easy jet flight back from a holiday. <laughs> Guy's frugal with his money. I mean. Uh, uh, is this like what's the problem is he i uh, i don't know what's what's bad about that good on him man guys guys down to earth you know um uh th there was another one uh this was uh the star if you if you happen to know the star basically in in terms of tears you have like you know it like goes like uh well, i can't even say the guardian anymore i don't even know what a good newspaper in britain looks like but you know you would have like tell you know telegraph and and may and then mail and then it gets like sun and mirror and then you have star and then you have sport you know like the daily sport. so there's a very clear hierarchy this was this one's from the daily star um this one is the daily star being outright outraged that raheem sterling's car is dirty Man City ace Raheem Sterling drives filthy $50,000 Mercedes. How dare he have a dirty car, mate? How dare a guy who makes 50 grand have a dirty car? Look at it. You could write your name in the dirt on that. How dare he do it? How dare? How dare he have a dirty car? Right? Um... Now, you might have heard about Raheem Sterling. He he got caught in something where I think he'd you know he'd got had a one night stand with some woman and it all got exposed. I can't remember the details, but I think he got caught having a one night stand and you know him and his missus had a rocky period. Well, they worked through it, right? That's a good thing. And it happened. How many people does that happen to? Your partner cheats on you. It's tough for a while, but then you realise like what we got's bigger than that. It's just sex. You know, we can we can still build a relationship from this. You know, the adult thing to do. It's happening to so many people. It's just a normal part of existence. Well, Raheem Sterling was uh, a love rat and apparently his girlfriend was long-suffering. You see, because he, he cheated. But he proposed to her, but he's a love rat and uh and uh she's suffering by being with him because he cheated once long suffering makes him sound like he's giving fucking backhands for breakfast all the time like that crazy fortnight cunt long suffering like holy fucking shit
Then, just to get back to the sun for a little bit, right? And <laughs> I'm trying to think. Wasn't there a group of racist people, by the way? I can't remember what their names were. Didn't they juxtapose the word rat and images of rats against people they were prejudiced against? Um, oh, who were they? Who were they? Who were they? There was there was a there was a group of people. They were famous. I can't remember, right? But the Sun, they obviously don't know who they are either. Cause look at this, right? This oh, this was when he had the affair. Prem rat of the Caribbean. He's just a rat, mate. He's just a rat. Cause he's out there with other girls, you know. Totally front page news, by the way. Footballer decides might put it about a bit. Fucking hell. Hold the phone. So he's a rat. He's been called a rat twice now. Um, this is another weird one. The Daily Mail, they do some weird ones. I don't even know what this is. I, I, I can't even tell if they're criticizing him. Uh, what's the point of this one? Raheem Sterling treats himself to a spot of breakfast after missing out on being crowned the young player of the year the night before. What you what's that mean? He's having breakfast. Like, what's that? What you what you even Rats eat breakfast, don't they? Is that what they're trying to say? I don't know. What's that about? Like literally the yeah, literally the headline is man eats food. After not winning awards. I mean, like, what, what's he supposed to do? Like, fast until they give it to him. Like, uh, uh, right? What is madness. Raheem Sterling eats breakfast, his headline. Now, I'm going to save the one big story to write at the end. Here's another one, right? Raheem Sterling. We know this guy, obviously, wants to do much. Like, think about it. This is a guy. This is a kid. Jamaican heritage. Dad dead, right? Killed. Um, made something of himself. Looks after his family. All positives. Right? But because he saves his money, it's really weird how they try and make him out like he's like a bad person for it. Look at this. Raheem Sterling spotted bargain hunting in Pound World. Pound he went to fucking Pound World? He's got millions. What's he doing in Pound World? He literally, as well, what a fucking, you know, man of the people. He's in Pound World. He knows he's going to get shit for being in Pound World. And he stops and takes a photo with a fan in Pound World. Like, what a nice guy, right? He must know. As soon as that goes on Twitter, everyone's going to be having his eyes out. Yeah, you're in fucking Pound World, you shit cunt. Yeah. Right? Guy's a fucking ledge. This one is... This one is... Uh, you can't... This one I have to agree with. I mean, this is just outrageous, though. I will say this, that Raheem Sterling, he messed up big time here because what about the time that 44 million bargain-loving Raheem Sterling went to Greg's? He loves pasties! Greg's loves pasties! What's he doing? Why is he in Greg's? Have you had a steak bake? They've gone well downhill. He's had a Greg's, mate. $44 million personal wealth that we probably has got by adding up all of his salary ever times, like, how long he's been playing for, in that, as if that is your personal wealth, you know? He's had a pasty, mate. Unbelievable. Also in the star is another thing. Obviously, the geezer... You know, how dare he? He's bought something from Primark, the budget clothing store. He makes 180 grand a week. How dare he be frugal with his money? What's he doing shopping in Primark? How dare he be just a regular guy saving his money? Pasties, Primark. What is this? Your car's dirty. You won't even pay to get it cleaned and waxed. What's wrong with you, mate? Then, you see, he can't win. If he's frugal with his money... He gets wrecked. What, you're making money? What you saving money for? What's wrong with you, daft cunt? If he spends his money, well, you're just a pampered, 
you know, perfumed footballer. You're not a man of the people. How dare you have two holidays in a week? How dare you? How dare you spend your money on having two holidays in a week? He gets pr a hiring a private jet and having a holiday to recharge his batteries before going away on the World Cup squad. He's gone to two countries. He's had two holidays with his fiance. How fucking dare he do that? Right, two holidays, two scoops of ice cream. Raheem Sterling is obviously the Donald Trump of the football world. Now, you might also have, um, have noticed this about the sun. Uh, there is this... Uh... Oh, we got a donation coming in. Hello. Big gay Henry G. Thank you for $2. Uh, what an absolute blunder. <laughs> what an absolute blunder from Raheem there. Shocking stuff. Right, I, I will have to get the window up in the top right hand corner while i'm looking at these things yeah right so he's had right so it, it is something else that the sun did because again just saying crack has a connotation in the mind of a racist doesn't it now a lot of footballers because they can't do drugs and they can't smoke and they, they're not supposed to drink how do they get their jollies because everyone's got to do it everyone's got to unwind well is one of the things that people have been doing. It's um, this. Uh, they do. I am fucking. Let me let me find the newspaper. I've actually lost it. I'm back on. I'm back on the one about the gun tattoo, which is the big one. Um, right, let me find it. So yeah, nitrous oxide. Here it is. I got the story. I'll copy paste it. Nitrous oxide is uh, you know laughing gas basically. And um, people, you know, it can be harmful, but generally it's in an IT system, it's not illegal, you know, you get giggly, you get lightheaded, people take it, right? they take it in balloons. The sun, yeah, like whippets, there you go. Uh, the sun, call it hippie crack. Hippie crack. Laughing gas, it's what we all, it's what we all know it as, right? Well, it's laughing gas. Makes it sound too innocuous. We can't call it that, mate. Makes it sound innocent. Makes it sound harmless. So, hippie crack. And they, they look at this. Um, exclusive. Liverpool A Sterling on hippie crack. Not illegal. Not illegal. Not against the terms of uh, any contract or drug laws or anything he would encounter as an athlete. But look, you can see him. He's having a laugh in the picture. That's what it does. It makes you happy. It makes you have a laugh. Don't do too much of it, obviously. Can be dangerous in large doses and small doses of a balloon. It makes you lightheaded. It makes you giggly for a bit. There you go. Pretty much all you can do as a footballer. If you've been seen with a pint in his hand, he'd have been called a fat cunt and an alcoholic. If you've been seen smoking a cigarette, he'd have been called unhealthy and he would have been fined by the club and he would have been told he's a terrible role model. You know, he definitely can't do anything illegal. He can't even smoke a fucking joint. You know, so what do you do? What do footballers do? Hippie crack, evidently, according to the sun. Hippie fucking crack, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, what else have we got here? Uh, they the, the Daily Mail went through and added up every car uh, that he's ever bought. And he's got, look, he, he's bought over a million pounds worth of cars during his short career. You know, some of them cost 12 grand. Some of them cost half a mil. Imagine that. Imagine spending your money that you make. Imagine spending your money on cars if you're into buying cars, you know? Like, again, I just don't understand. Like, isn't this good for the economy? I mean, are we, uh... Um... So what else have we got? Uh... Yeah, we need that one as well for later. Um... Then, I mean, I like this one. This was this is a personal favourite. Uh, so Raheem Sterling, who, by the way, remains one of, like, England's, you know, best players. Um, you know, he gets all this shit, right? The newspapers, the Daily Mail, pretty much just admitted, we're going to keep hounding you unless you score goals. Like, you know, imagine that. Here you go. The only way Raheem Sterling can escape the storm You're not even a real is to inspire England to World Cup glory in Russia. What storm? They're saying we're going to keep writing about you unless you fucking score these goals, right? So, ridiculous. Um, then, there was one where, why this is Raheem Sterling's fault, I don't know. Um, 
Right. You do know Raheem Sterling's just a player, right? He's just a player, yeah? He doesn't run the FA. He doesn't run big business. He doesn't run Nike or Adidas or anyone else who makes, like, sports apparel. He just plays, right? And when you play, you have to wear a uniform, right? I mean, we all know that, right? Good. Glad we got that. So, what is this headline about? The Telegraph. England's £160 World Cup kit is made in Bangladesh by workers on 21 pence an hour. Picture of Raheem Sterling. Is it Raheem Sterling? Has anything to do with, with sweatshop labour in fucking Bangladesh? Why? You know? It's ridiculous. Um... Uh, you know, he, he's just everything. Um, so there, there's a ton of others. But the big story, um, the, the big story is the tattoo. The big story is the tattoo. Um, for those who didn't see this, uh, Raheem Sterling had the audacity to get a tattoo all right now the tattoo he got it was of a gun mate oh no all right okay so here it is raheem sterling england forward raheem sterling defends gun tattoo. he got he got this tattoo on his leg it's an m16 rifle um on his leg Hang on. why is why is this flashing fuck me expert is fucking shit right can we are we are we done okay good um so when this when this was seen the papers went mental they went mental i have never seen a reaction like this ever uh they attacked him basically um saying that the tattoo was completely unacceptable um Okay, so let me tell you the story about why Raheem Sterling has a gun tattoo. Raheem Sterling's dad got killed in, um, you know, he got gunned down in Jamaica, in Kingston, which we all know has, like, some pretty fucking, you know, tough problems with gang crime and stuff out there. And uh, he says it's got the personal meaning, it's to honour his father, and it's because he said he would never touch a gun in his life. So he's got the tattoo and it's like a reminder of his dad. What is the problem? <laughs> What is the problem with that? Well, let's go in. We can dig into the BBC report. And I'll read you one of the most egregious, over-the-top uh, com comments ever. Lucy Cope, who founded the group Mothers Against Guns after her son was shot dead in 2012, said Sterling should not play for England unless he gets rid of the tattoo. Speaking to the Sun newspaper, who else, said... This tattoo is disgusting. Raheem should hang his head in shame. It's totally unacceptable. We demand he has the tattoo lasered off or covered up with a different tattoo. Now listen, love, right? I don't care if every fucking member of your family was double tapped like you the the idea you ha have the right to demand that somebody lasers a tattoo off their body is outrageous uh, it's outrageous you would even think that it's outrageous you would even say that it, it's beyond a joke it's beyond a joke. Imagine saying that. I don't like your tattoo. Get it lasered off. You shouldn't be allowed to work until you laser. Look, who is this cunt? Like, fucking what? So again, Raheem Sterling has to come out and explain himself. He says, when I was two, my father died from being gunned down to death. And I made a promise to myself I would never touch a gun in my life. Uh, I shoot with my right foot so it has a deeper meaning. It's still unfinished. And, um, you know, Gary Lineker came out and made the point, you know, that which is true. We always try and destroy our players going into major tournaments. Um, you know, uh, a lot of people came out and backed uh, Raheem because obviously, again, it's it's an adversity story that he's turned around. 
what it, the sun was relentless with this shit i mean that's the bbc picking up on it let me show you so first of all they get that woman lucy cope who was obviously gone through a tragedy herself i can't forgive her for how ridiculous you know her comments are but you know going through a tragedy obviously it's going to turn you into a fucking you know it's going to mess with your mind a little bit now i don't know if you know um if, if any of you guys have heard of dami lola uh taylor dami lola taylor was a 10 year old boy uh it was one of the worst shootings you know most tragic shootings in 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 england um was that uh some young boys basically in in london shot a 10 year old um and uh the people who did it got convicted of manslaughter so what do you think the son did right the son contacted dami lola taylor's dad and demand and got dami lola taylor's dad the father of a 10 year old who got shot nothing to do with raheem sterling nothing to do with raheem sterling and they got dami lola taylor's dad to ask that raheem sterling apologize for the tattoo front page news slain 10 year old's father furious at england star what is this what 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 why would why is what's raheem sterling got to apologize for here in any of this like sorry you lost a kid right You're not even a real doesn't person. end there that's right right if you think that's ridiculous which it is if you think any of this so far is ridiculous because you got a gun tattooed on his leg this will blow your motherfucking mind this will blow your mind more than showing violent j a magnet right this this will blow your fucking mind so we dig out a grieving father who lost a 10 year old and we put him on the front page and everything else right this is insane right two more teenagers were killed over the weekend as sterling revealed his controversial gun tattoo now can somebody get me the fucking venn diagram where it's sterling gets tattoo two teenagers get stabbed gets tattoo of a gun two teenagers get stabbed can you show me where those two things intersect can you show me where those two things intersect in any way shape or form if you can if you can show me what the correlation is i would i would love to know i would love to know because it would it would uh it would really help me out man it would it would really fucking help me out i can't you know, I can't, uh, I can't figure it out. Like, I can't figure out what a man getting a tattoo of a gun has to do with a 15-year-old getting stabbed in Sheffield. I don't understand it. So, so Raheem Sterling, the shit he has been put through um, by the mainstream media. You know, it's no wonder he can laugh off some fucking gammon cunt shouting at him like that. Because it's nothing. That is nothing. That is that that is nothing compared to what the mainstream press put him through every single goddamn day he wants to go out and play fucking football. It, it it's it is ridiculous. Um now I I I'll just add as well. I mean, you know, the guy who maybe didn't even say anything racist denies it with no evidence yet to say that he definitively did say something racist um you know his life's been completely ruined whatever i i think we actually move on from that now we need to start looking at yeah what is wrong with the fucking media and how it reports on certain football players this sustained campaign particularly from the sun it does reek, doesn't it, of, you know, this guy's young, black, and successful. And we're not going to put up with that. And let's not forget, he's young, black, and successful, played for Liverpool, the one place you'll never find a copy of the Sun. So, 
absolutely horrendous. Did I see the Sun's statement? No, did they make a statement? Interesting. Okay, I didn't see this part of the story. Um, oh, I mean, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that, that was actually in the... Um, that was actually in the thing. So I'll just read it to you. Uh, that was in the initial report by The Sun, the first one I showed. It says, let's get something straight. The racist abuse of Raheem Sterling at Chelsea is not somehow The Sun's fault. We hope those allegedly responsible get what they deserve. We hugely admire Sterling's talent. Our coverage of his off-field behavior has nothing to do with skin color. The suggestion is ridiculous and offensive, and the idea it inspired racists is baseless. His media mates... Media mates? Should engage their brains before dishing out accusations without a shred of evidence. Where are his mates in the media? He hasn't got any mates in the media, evidently. But, I mean, you know, just another reason to say fuck the sun, right? Absolute insanity. Um, so, yeah, I mean, like, I, I'm definitely inclined to agree with, uh, with, with Raheem on this one. And it's like, look, I would be looking more at... I, I consider the newspaper coverage uh to be uh way more of a problem way more uh, you know in indicative of endemic problems than than that guy maybe shouting something i don't even know like i i i do not feel comfortable saying that guy said something racist because i don't you know i think it's important you know the guy's having his life ruined over something he claims he didn't do so which you know we gotta we got to wait for the police investigation on that one. Um, and believe me, they'll find him. Apparently, they've got they've got access to sound and images and everything else that like didn't get shown on the TV. So they'll they'll find out uh, for sure. Um, so yeah, that was the the Raheem Sterling thing was fucking just unbelievable. Yeah, and think about it, you know, exactly. Suarez uh, admitted to calling. Uh, Patrice Evra a, a racist term um, you know it bites people like it's insane you know I, I, I'll, I'll definitely agree with what um, with what Gary Lineker has pointed out there um, you know and it's like we do like to destroy English footballers but honestly the nonsense Raheem Sterling's had to put up with is so fucking bad like it's just ridiculous 